What's going on, C Kids? Welcome back to our online experience. This week, we are continuing our series called Block Party, and we're talking about what makes a good friend. Today, we're gonna hear another awesome story about friendship between a man named Elijah and another man named Elisha. I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but we're gonna get into it real quick. But before we do, I wanna wish a happy 38th birthday to Community Church. Let's all sing happy birthday to them today, right after some praise and worship. Let's get started. I'm Lawson and I'm extremely popular because I have 2,378 close personal friends. Ooh, 2,379 friends, well, followers. Okay, people I sorta know or met once. One of my friends is Jar Jar? What kind of name is that? I don't, I don't know what Jar Jar. Anyways, today I've got a great story about a girl named Gemma in my aunt's sixth grade class and how she made some real life friends. See, Gemma's mom got transferred and they moved to a brand new town. 
where the kids have already been in school for a whole month. And Gemma's super nervous because all the kids will already have friends and she won't fit in. And they'll just ignore her like she's invisible. Then Gemma sees this girl, Maisie, walking to school. And Gemma's like, look at her. She's got it all together. But mom reminds her that most kids aren't as confident as they look. And Gemma wonders, what will they think of me? And her mom tells her to focus on what others need rather than what they think about you. When Gemma gets to her first class, it feels like all eyes are on her. But Gemma chooses to keep her eyes off herself. Three minutes into Miss Freeman's lesson on Lewis and Clark, the girl beside Gemma, Maisie, breaks her pencil. Right away, Gemma reaches into her backpack and pulls out her extra pencil. Her big pencil. Her really, really big pencil. Eggs. Milk. Candy, more candy. At lunchtime, Gemma sits alone and she's starting to feel really sorry for herself. But then she sees two other kids, Noah and Grace, looking for a table and invites them to sit with her. And Gemma even shares her dad's famous chocolate chip cookies with them. Dad uses cayenne pepper so the cookies have a little extra bite. <laughs> And then after that, Gemma's right behind this other girl, Brooke. When Brooke drops her bag, spilling all her books and papers and the world's largest collection of ping pong balls, some kids start laughing at Brooke. But then Gemma jumps in right away to help. And then Maisie jumps in and Noah and Grace. And they get everything picked up in record time. And they all do a celebration dance. And when Gemma gets back in the car, mom gives her a thumbs up. A giant thumbs up! And Jim is actually excited to go back! So kids, never put cayenne pepper in cookies. But always do remember that friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. Ha. Oh hey! My friend Paul posted this really cool picture of us from his birthday party yesterday. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna like this. Actually, I'm gonna tell Paul I like it in real life. With this! Look how big it is! Okay, alright. Bye guys, I'll see you next time. Hey Paul! Come on, Haley, you've got this. Yes! <laughs> you ever notice with games like this, there's never really a winner. There just seems to be oh! one big loser. That's how I feel with most games. It doesn't seem to matter how much I practice, I can't ever seem to win. It's true with everything. Badminton. Lawn bowling. Frisbee golf. It can be kind of discouraging. I need a little cheering up. Which is where friendship comes in. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. Sometimes it helps to have friends around to kind of be like cheerleaders. Come on, Haley, hit that birdie over the net all the way to Camp Birdie. You've got this, Haley. Concentrate, concentrate. Encouragement goes a long way and in today's story you'll learn about two guys whose friendship was built on encouragement The Bible it's 66 books of history stories letters and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. 
As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. For many years, God's people were ruled by kings who refused to listen to God. So God sent prophets to speak his words. One was a man named Elijah. I serve the Lord. Elijah did amazing things through God's power, like calling for rain after three years of drought and uh, bringing a dead boy back to life. But being a prophet was a lonely, difficult life. After the evil queen Jezebel threatened his life, Elijah fled to Mount Horeb. God, I've been committed to you, but the people have turned their backs on me. I am the only prophet left. God already had an answer to Elijah's pleas. A friend. Go back the way you came. Anoint Elisha from Abel Meholah as the next prophet after you. So Elijah tightened his belt and set out along the road. When he finally reached the town, he noticed several young men plowing with a dozen pair of oxen. And in the very last field, he noticed one of the young men struggling to keep his oxen in line. Get up there, Ham. Move along, Burger. God, is that Elisha? He's just a small town kid. What does he have? Does he have what it takes to be a prophet? But God had chosen Elisha, so Elijah tramped through the muddy field to greet the young man. Elisha! Elisha blinked in surprise when he saw the prophet. Whoa, Burger! Elijah marched right up to Elisha and threw his very own cloak over the young man's shoulders. It was a sign that God had chosen Elisha to be Elijah's assistant. Me? You're choosing me? Elijah turned and walked away. Elisha dropped the reins and ran after. Wait, just let me say goodbye to my family. Then I'll come with you. Go right ahead. I'm not making you do anything. Yes, sir. Right then and there, Elisha broke apart his plow and used the wooden pieces to start a fire. He cooked a meal and called all his family and friends over to share it with him. I'm leaving to travel with Elijah. Goodbye, everyone. Then Elisha set out on the road beside Elijah. I don't really know how to be a prophet, or, or even a prophet's assistant. That's okay, you'll learn. So over the years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere as a close companion and good friend, and he watched and listened intently as Elijah spoke God's words to powerful kings and, and did incredible things. One day, Elisha and Elijah left the town of Gilgal on the way to Bethel, and they both knew that God was about to do something very breathtaking. God was going to take Elijah up to heaven. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. Elisha wasn't about to leave his friend to go it alone. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. At Bethel, the same thing happened. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. It happened once again in Jericho. Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan River. As sure as the Lord and you are alive, I won't leave you. You do realize you're repeating yourself. Together, Elisha and Elijah reached the banks of the Jordan River. The waters flowed dark and deep. Elijah removed his coat and rolled it up. And then he struck the river. Immediately, the waters parted to the right and left. Elisha and Elijah walked across the river on dry ground. They reached the opposite bank. Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Elisha didn't want to lose his friend and mentor, Elijah, but he'd learned many things in the last few years. Please, give me a double share of the spirit God has given you. Only the Lord can do that. But if you see me when I'm taken away, that means you will receive what you've asked for. Elisha nodded, and the two men walked on in silence. Suddenly, a wild wind whipped up, and a chariot and horses appeared blazing with fire. Elijah. The flaming chariot flew down right between the two men. It caught up Elijah and carried him up to heaven, driven by a strong wind. Elijah, you are like a father to me. Elisha stared into the sky until the last breath of wind and the final hint of flame were gone. 
Then in great sorrow, he tore his own clothes. My best friend is gone. Glancing down at the ground, he saw Elijah's coat. Carefully, he picked it up. I wonder. Elisha hurried back to the bank of the Jordan River. Again, the water flowed hard and fast. On the opposite bank, a group of prophets from Jericho watched. Look, there's Elisha, but where's Elijah? Across the river, Elisha twisted up Elijah's coat. He called out in a loud voice. Where is the power of the Lord? Where is the power of the God of Elijah? Then Elisha struck the water just as Elijah had done. And just like what happened before, the waters parted to the right and left. The prophets from Jericho stared in amazement as Elisha crossed the river on dry land. The spirit God gave to Elijah has been given to Elisha. It was true. Elisha had been faithful to follow and learn from Elijah for many years, and now God's spirit was with Elisha just as it had been with his friend. One way to be a good friend is to just be there when they need you. Look at today's story. Elisha was there for Elijah right to the very end. And even after he died, Elijah's spirit was with Elisha. Now, I don't know exactly how Elijah's spirit was with Elijah, but it sounds pretty cool. Jesus said God would send a friend to always be there for us. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate friend. He gives you wisdom when you're confused, strength when you're feeling weak, and encouragement when you need it the most. That's the kind of friend we should be. You can cheer your friend on when they play sports or, or even if they have an audition or a hard test. You can give someone a shoulder to cry on when they've had a rough day or when something sad happens. Sometimes it's best not to say anything and to just be there for your friend. Just think of how you'd like someone to encourage you if you felt that way. So here's the one thing to remember today. Friends encourage one another. Encouragement may not make problems go away or make people any better at games but it can remind them that they're loved and that they're not alone. And sometimes that's enough. So you are going to be so good at this. I'm
That was such an incredible story about friendship. Elijah was so lonely, but then God brought Elisha into his life. Together they encouraged each other and they served God together, which brings me to our bottom line today. Our bottom line is that friends always encourage one another. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the friends that we have, and I pray that you remind us to encourage one another. I pray that you bless our church on our birthday today, and I pray that you keep us until we meet again. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you guys next week for the conclusion of our series, Block Party. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to join us for our Zoom groups every Sunday at 11 a.m. We'll see you guys there.